Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today we're going to go over five super quick things you can do to boost your Squarespace SEO right now. Squarespace gets a pretty bad rep for SEO, honestly, and I don't think it's deserved. But one of the problems I mostly see is that because a lot of DIYers use Squarespace, which is amazing, they often don't think about their SEO very much. So firstly, if you're watching this and you don't even know what SEO is, it is search engine optimization. Basically, it's optimizing your website so it gets viewed on Google or other search engines. And it's pretty important if you're trying to get more traffic to your site. Squarespace offers tons of built-in ways to boost your SEO. And SEO is a real can of worms. It's kind of an endless job. So today we're just gonna focus on five quick tweaks you can do with in the next 20 minutes or so. So let's jump in. The first thing is adding a site title to your website, which you probably have already done, but also maybe adding some keywords to that site title. I often see that people have actually missed adding a site title to their site. And it's really, really important that you add a site title. So we'll start there. I have two websites open at the moment. One is in Squarespace 7.1 and one is in Squarespace 7.0. So I'll show you how to do this on both. Your site title is basically the name of your website. So if you look up here along the top of my browser, you'll see that this one is called test site and this one is called your site title. So if you don't actually add a name to your site, it will just be called your site title or it'll just be blank, which isn't ideal. So let's add a site title. In 7.1, you just need to click edit, edit site header, site title and logo, and you can add your site title here. Now, when you add your site title, I highly recommend adding some keywords too, which will help boost your SEO. So if you're a photographer, you could write something like Nikki Carter Photography, which would be your site title. And then you could add some keywords like portraits in Wellington City or something like that. So this not only says who you are and what you do, but it says what you do even further and where you are. So this is just an example of adding a few keywords to your site title. Now, if you are just using text and a font for your site title instead of a logo, the whole thing will show up here. So you might not wanna do that unless you're using a logo. If you upload your own custom logo, it will replace this text. And then this text will actually just be used for your main site title on Google and in the browser. If you're doing it in 7.0, you can click on design, logo and title, and you do the exact same thing here. So for my website, I have Big Cat Creative, Squarespace templates. So that is my business name and specifically what I create our main offering here, especially because my business name doesn't actually say anything about what I do. I think it's important to have that in the site title. And then same again with the logo. If you upload a logo, it will actually replace the site title and you'll only be able to see the site title in the browser and on Google. So number one, adding a site title and adding some keywords to that site title. You can see now that this one's updated and you can actually read the site title here and here. Number two is our page titles and descriptions. So if you click on pages in your pages panel, you'll see all of your pages here and their names. If you click on the little cog icon next to your page, no matter what page it is, it will show you the title, navigation title, and the URL slug. Now I have a whole video on how to optimize your URL slugs all around your site. So if you haven't done that, I highly recommend watching that video. If you have a ton of pages, it can be a little bit time consuming. So that's why I created a whole video about it. But if you don't have too many pages, the general gist of it is to keep your page titles short and concise. And the same with your URL slugs. And you want your slug to relate to your page title. So if my page title was 
shop templates, my navigation title could also be shop templates and my URL slug could be shop templates, just like that. So just keeping it nice and short, no filler words in there, just main keywords only. And it's very clear what that page is. So Google will see that page and be like, okay, this page is where you shop templates. It's quite obvious and obvious is good when it comes to SEO. And I mentioned descriptions. So this is important too. Under SEO, you can actually add a SEO title and description to each of your pages. And I highly recommend doing this. Google loves this. You will be rewarded for doing this. So for your SEO title, just make sure it's again, concise and relevant to your page and shows Google and anyone who sees your link in Google, what exactly they'll be clicking on. I recommend adding an SEO description. So this is a basic description of your page. And what's in it. So one, this is going to help Google again, understand what's in the page. And number two, this is actually a chance to capture people's attention when they're scrolling through all of the suggestions on Google, they can actually read the description. And when you read a description, you think that information is for me or it's not for me. So it's really going to attract the right people to click on your link. If you don't add your own SEO description, Google or any other search engine will just pull information from the page. So it can kind of be a little bit random what displays. They'll just choose what they think is best, which isn't always best. So it's definitely worth using up this SEO description. I do recommend writing something longer here with more keywords and more of a description of the page than what I wrote, because what I wrote was just off the top of my head really short, but I recommend filling up the SEO description if you can with as much information as possible. The next one is another super easy one. We're going to update our site wide search engine description. So click on marketing, then SEO. There are some helpful links here from Squarespace if you wanted to look through those, but we're going to update our SEO description. So down the bottom here. So just like the page SEO description we just talked about, this one is actually for our entire site. So if someone sees just our site on Google, not a specific page, then that's when the site wide SEO description will show. So you can see a little example of it here, which I'm sure you'll recognize from Google or using any other sort of search engine. So this is where you, your description shows. So I highly recommend adding one to two short sentences about what you do. So make it really keyword heavy. If you're a photographer, talk about what kind of photography you offer, where you are, and just try to remove all of the fluff. We want to keep it really short and concise and clear so that when people read it, they know that's exactly what they're looking for. So then they'll click on your site. Just something to the point, concise, short, like that. This is a really important one to have on your site. One tip you might not know about is to clean up your not linked pages. So head into pages and scroll down to your not linked area. So take a look at yours and you might see that there are some pages in there that you're not actually using anymore. Maybe old pages that you've moved to the not linked section with the intention of keeping in case you might need them one day, but really you're not using them at all. They're just old and they potentially could be deleted. Or if you don't want to delete them, you could just disable them. So just because they're in your not linked section and hiding from your visitors eyes doesn't mean that Google or other search engines can't see them. Actually, they definitely will see them and they will probably index them and people could come across them on Google. So things in your not linked section are very much still live pages and they will be indexed by search engines. So if you have a ton of pages in there that you're not using old pages, old content, basically scraps, then we need to at least turn those off, if not delete them. So for example, let's just say this is an old blog page and I definitely am not using it anymore, but I might want to keep it just in case I need to get some information from those posts someday. 
what I recommend doing is disabling it. So we're just gonna click on this little cog here and here where it says enable page, we'll just click it and turn it off. So this is going to hide it from the eyes of search engines, which will help tidy up your site and also avoid having visitors find those pages through search engines. So just have a look and see what you need, what you don't need. You could go ahead and just delete some pages or you could disable some, but make sure that everything in your not linked you are actually using if you're not using it. And if you don't want people to find it, it needs to be disabled. If you do have pages in your not linked section that you want some people to use, but you don't actually want in to be indexed by Google or you're still using them for some reason, you can actually click on the cog and under SEO, you can scroll down and click hide page from search results. So this is going to keep the page live, but it's gonna hide it from search engines, which might be right for some of your pages depending on what you need to do with them. Our final tip is for Squarespace 7.0 users. This is one that not a lot of people know about. If you are using Squarespace 7.1, this is pretty much the end of the video for you. You don't need to worry about this one, but this is really important for 7.0 users. So on your website, click on pages. And this is only relevant, of course, if you're using Squarespace 7.0, but if you're using index pages on your site. Some 7.0 sites don't actually support index pages, but I know that many people that are using 7.0 are using index pages. If you don't have any index pages or if you don't even know what they are, then don't worry about it. So on this example site here, if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see on my homepage, I'm using an index page. And the index page is a little bit weird because it's basically a collection of full pages. And that means that it can be indexed as one whole page and it can also be indexed as separate pages. So to avoid any confusion with Google or people landing on weird single pages, I recommend turning off all of your index sections for SEO. And then if you turn all of these off for SEO and leave the entire index page on, Google will only index this as one complete page rather than one complete page and eight other single pages. You might think the more the better for SEO, but in this case, it's definitely better to turn them off. So if you have index pages, make sure to go through and click on the cog, SEO, and turn it off. So hide page from search results. And you'll wanna do that for every single one of your index sections. Cool, that's it. I hope those SEO tips were quick and helpful. Make sure to check out below the video, I'll link some resources from Squarespace and some other SEO tips that I have. If you want to read the full written version of this, then you can just follow the link I've added below that goes straight to our blog and you'll find the complete step-by-step -step for everything there. Thanks for watching.